Hello, I'm Jim Gordon. I'm treasurer for Citizens for Regional Transit, a transit advocacy group in Western New York. We held our public meeting on October 18th, 2023 at the Niagara Falls Amtrak Station and Custom House Interpretive Center. This public meeting is about transit and regional tourism. As it turns out, Western New York is at the peak of its fall foliage, and Amtrak is running a special from Boston, Massachusetts to Niagara Falls for a fall foliage tour. While you're at the brand new Amtrak Niagara Falls, New York station, be sure to visit the Niagara Falls Underground Railroad Heritage Center, which is in the train station and is a very worthwhile museum visit. Before cars took over from public transit, you used to be able to take a high-speed light rail train between Buffalo and Niagara Falls that ran every 30 minutes. Here is a picture of that train at the Brighton Road crossing in the town of Tonawanda. CRT President Doug Funky will start us off, followed by a keynote speaker, Sarah Capen, who is Executive Director of the Niagara Falls National Heritage Area. And then we have three really good panelists, Pat Keelar, President and Chief Executive Officer of Visit Buffalo Niagara, Andrea Zopp, Chief Operations Officer of Destination Niagara USA, and Tom George, Vice President of Operations at the NFTA. Let's go right to Doug. I got that back up. Okay, uh, just real quick. We, we got in interested in, in connecting, I mean, we've been interested for many years, but in connecting Buffalo and Niagara Falls. And Niagara Falls, of course, is a well-known mecca of tourism. Uh, it's world famous. As I mentioned, I was in the Navy, and I went over different places over the world, and I said, that's the where you're from. I said, Niagara Falls. Oh, wow, I've heard of that. You know, it's really, a, it's, I mean, it's, it's everywhere you go. Everyone knows about it. I and mean, we've got it right here, uh, you know, in, in this article that was in the Buffalo News in 2013, basically said uh, they, they did an informal survey. They went and talked to people in, at the falls and said, hey, what'd you think of our falls? And they said, well, it's great, but not much to do here. And just really, we've got tons of things to do here, but they didn't know about it, apparently, and we couldn't get there. It's probably the, the main reason. Uh, so we, we started lobbying at that time, and we, we met with, with the uh, Niagara River Greenway Commission. We met with... Uh, Mayors up and down the, the, the river in Tonawanda's, Paul Deister here in, in Niagara Falls, and you know got interest in and Paul Deister. I think was one of the really took took the lead in, in, in making in making that happen. We made a lot of improvements, and this was, but in 2013 there wasn't much. And this is what we have. You know, this is this was our vision to connect our region. I mean, we call it the world's greatest waterfront. You know, between what we have here in Niagara Falls, all the stuff that's happening in Buffalo. You know, I. I think that there's a lot of synergy between the two cities. I mean, Buffalo and Niagara Falls, of course, is a, is a mecca, but it's really a, a seasonal mecca. Buffalo is a larger city, a bigger tax base, uh, and it has year-round uh, attractions. So if we can connect the two. Uh, we do have a connection today with the NFTA, but it's not really integrated with what's out there now. And we'd like to see the, 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 um, the Niagara Discovery Shuttle that Sarah runs to to extend to, to Buffalo as well and have it all integrated. And so when tourists come here, they can go to the, when they go to the, the uh, tourist center in Niagara Falls, they'll say, gee, what's there to do here? And they'll say, well, you can take package A and you can see the falls and take the Maid of the Mist or you can get taxi package B and go up to the Whirlpool and Port Niagara and get tickets to those. Package C, go to Niagara Falls, you can go to the museums up there, go to the ship museum. Uh, the, the, the little carousel, the Albright Knox, I mean, this, this stuff, you can know, all be part of a package and people will stay here. I, I know, as soon as they talk about it, it's pretty easy for us to put these lines on a, on a blue graph. <laughs> it's a lot harder to make this stuff actually happen. And one of the issues I know Sarah can probably talk about is that there's, there's two different tax bases. I mean, Erie County has its own tax structure and their own bed tax, and, and it's used for different things, and our county has theirs. And, it's hard to get uh, sharing, but there's a great opportunity for both counties. So this has been a, something we've been promoting for many, many years. And this isn't a new idea. Uh, that, you know, this, these are some of these charts here. I mean, back in the old days, there was there was train. We were kind of famous. Shuffle off the Buffalo, Niagara on a sleeper. You know, it was part of our image, the connection by, by train. Uh, and you can see here, they were running every half an hour back in the day. The picture there, that train, that's the old B-liner. 
It ran until the mid 50s. I wrote on that. It was wonderful. But of course, the 50s is when we were trying to get rid of all that kind of stuff. But uh, it connected Buffalo to, to Niagara Falls. So, you know, I think the near term would be uh, the, the, the shuttle extension. But the, we, the tracks are there. Amtrak uses them. So it's very easy, uh, you know, it's doable to, to have rail connected our cities again as well at some point, maybe a future goal. And again, let me let me just uh, turn it over to, to Sarah now and let her tell us about her organization, the work she's been doing, and uh, thank you. All right, hi everybody. Um, thank you so much for coming. Thank you uh, for taking time out your Wednesday um, to just join this conversation about the Discover Niagara Shuttle. Doug, thank you for leading so many years of efforts and advocacy um, just to improve transportation infrastructure within Western New York. And certainly um, it doesn't go unnoted and the need for that does not go unnoted. So. Um, very grateful. I'm also grateful for our team. Um, a lot of people think that the Discover Niagara Shuttle is this very, very large team. Um, there's actually only three of us on the National Heritage Area side, me being one. So I'd like to point out Aaron, who's in the second row, who's our operations manager, um, who is literally picks up the phone every time someone calls um, for a ride. And then Matt, who organized all the tech, um, who's around here somewhere, is also the, th oh, there he is, Matt third person of our team, and also our Matt yes. Um And also our fantastic partner, which is Grayline in the back. So Hughes joined us and Trisha joined us, and this is a public-private partnership that we've worked very closely since 2016 to develop. Grateful that you're here today. Grateful for some of my board members to be here today. So thank you so much, Kate um, and Ken, who Ken just snuck in. Um, so. I know that Doug had asked a little bit about the National Heritage Area, so I will talk a little bit about that. So what is the National Heritage Area? Um, while I can share who we are, there's also materials on the back table um, that shows the volume of work. So if I had to minimize it right now, um, what we are is we are a congressionally funded entity um, that is a public-private partnership. We have to match every dollar that we receive. We're authorized by Congress um, to highlight what is best about uh, an area, what makes it significant to the America's story. And so we were designated in 2008. Um, we've been building projects ever since then. Uh, the Discover Niagara Shuttle is one of those projects. If you look out this door, we also have responsible for, for building and administering the Niagara Falls Underground Railroad Heritage Center. If you look out this door, we have murals. All those murals are our large public art initiative. We have eight additional public art installations that will be completed by Thanksgiving. Um, and so the Discover Niagara Shuttle is really one project of many that we work to champion and revitalize the city of Niagara Falls, uh, a place that we live, we work, and that we truly appreciate for its tremendous history. Uh, and so we're going to continue to talk a little bit more about the, the heritage area, but I wanted to add in this note because I think it's funny. This is not my first transportation experience. Um, I was hired by the Buffalo Bills as a marketing associate, and I was hired specifically to run the Bills Express. Does anybody remember the Buffalo Bills Express? No, a logistical nightmare. You do, Tom? So as a 23-year-old, my task was to bring Buffalo Bills fans by Amtrak from Albany to Buffalo to a Bills game and transfer them from Depew onto buses. Okay, so what do you think happened when there's no rules, right? And so we would pick up about a thousand people for a game and we pick up in Schenectady, we go to Syracuse, we pick up in Utica, we get to Buffalo, right? People could drink, people could tailgate on the train, right? And then I had to move them all onto motor coaches, right? We get to the Buffalo Bills game, I take a 20 minute nap up in my office, Turn it on at halftime, the Jumbotron shows the entire Bills Express section completely passed out. <laughs> right? And then I have to get them back on buses. And there's no accountability. Like, there's no one like being like, hey, here's this, here's that. And then I have to get them on trains. 
And then they're responsible for getting off at their stop, which may or may not be their stop that they want to get off. So the first experience was actually like a full blown disaster from my end. It was successful from the Buffalo Bills end, but from my end, you know, I had people that were supposed to get off in Albany, they got off in Utica. I had families that just never reconnected again after halftime, right? <laughs> so this is not my first transportation experience. I have no background in transportation, but that, that experience with the Buffalo Bills was certainly um, a learning one that I would never want to do again. Um, but go Bills, right? So fast forward to today. So the Discover Niagara shuttle launched in 2016, but I always say that there's this pre-launch movement. As Doug indicated, I think that this has been an effort that has long been desired in so many management plans, um, probably that line Tom DeSantis' office that said, how can we figure out how to get people to extend their stay? And the conversation a lot of times, and Andrea knows this, comes down to is, well, what do we have here for people to do? And my argument has always been, we have such tremendous assets. We have Old Fort Niagara. We have beautiful villages like Lewiston and Youngstown. We have the Erie Canal. We have the New York Power Authority Niagara Power Project. We have assets. If the problem is that we have to figure out how to connect them, then what does that look like? And so that pre-launch conversation took place probably from 2013 to 2016. Um, I'm going to say Tom DeSantis was very much involved in it and just trying to figure out how we could do this. And it wasn't until the Niagara Power Project built their new visitor center that there was a desire to connect a shuttle from Niagara Falls State Park to the new power project on the then Robert Moses, that the opportunity arose. And when you think about that, and you think about creating economic impact, and think about revitalizing communities, revitalizing a city that's lost 50% of its population, 50% of its tax, tax base since the late 1960s, you probably don't want to create a transportation service that doesn't connect to the community, right? You'd be going from state agency to state agency on a state highway. And so with partners, we, went to the power authority and just asked if there could be another model. Um, and it took, you know, lots of conversations. Um, you know, nobody ever says yes the first time, right? Um, why, why would we do this, right? Why would we say yes the first time? Um, we're gonna make you earn that yes, um, which we did. We earned that yes. And it was actually when the power authority said, we're gonna commit to this, that we issued an RFP because that was the other part of it. Nobody knew how much it would cost. That's a pretty simple step, right? Um, if you don't know what it costs, then you don't know what you're working with or if it's impossible. So if they said it was gonna cost $20 million, you know, some people would say, nope, that's not happening. But the RFP came back and it was like $600,000. And that was doable. And the power authority was going to contribute. And the partners that came to the table, and this is an important part, is that we had all the partners at the table. We had Destination Niagara Falls USA. We had the city of Niagara Falls. We had New York State Parks. We had the town of Lewiston. NFTA joined the conversation. We had all the partners at the table that actually worked in a collaborative fashion to say, let's do this. And it was a lot, and that was a big step for people that it's a lot easier to work in our silos. It's a lot easier to work um, and say no, because who wants to do more work? Right, um, but we said yes, and it wasn't just Sarah Capen, it wasn't the National Heritage Area, um, it was everybody that was at that table. And I'm so grateful for that. And so that was certainly, you know, the before launch was how much does this cost? Who are our partners? How can we all contribute to make it happen? And we did it as a pilot. And I think pilot's an important word to use um, because you don't know if something's going to work or not, or whether or not you can make changes to it. And a pilot provides that opportunity. A pilot provides the opportunity to collect data. A pilot 
provides the opportunity to have conversations in the community about what's working for the town of Lewiston, what's not working for the town of Lewiston, what's working in Youngstown, what's not working in Youngstown. And so we took that step to really do that as, as a pilot and each contributed. And that was the part too, is that it wasn't one entity that contributed, everybody provided an amount of funding. And so fast forward to the actual launch. And I get so excited about this picture. And I want to thank Matt because I can't believe that many people showed up for that press conference. That's how exciting it was, which I think is awesome. So what does this cover in a shuttle look like? If you just look out this back window, our fleet of vehicles is actually right behind us in this lot over here. Um, we actually only started out with four vehicles, but we started off with a model about amenities. We started out with that model about what would a visitor like on these vehicles? And so, of course, you have air conditioning, you have heat, um, we have ADA accessible lifts in every single vehicle. Uh, we have bike racks that have three bikes. We have digital signage screens that show at least a two minute video on every stop on that shuttle so that you can learn more about the area. So you could learn about the NAC or Oakwood Cemetery or Niagara University's Castellani Museum. That's something that is experienced on every vehicle. You have Wi-Fi to connect to this fantastic GPS driven app that Matt developed um, that just lets you pick up your phone and track where the vehicles are. And that's a real benefit. And when you think about visitors who are international, some of those amenities are what is expected, right? Um, and so we're really proud of the fact that we thought about all those special things that would make that experience just be one of a kind here and also to build pride for a place when we have locals that ride it too. So fast forward a little bit to today. Um, we've grown quite a bit, right? So we have 22 fall support stops. We have eight Lockport stops. And this year we added a short micro loop between Four Mile Creek and the village of Youngstown, which has really taken off. Because um, when you think about it, and you think about Niagara Falls, you think about people who are camping, the place that they camp at is Four Mile Creek. It's the closest place that you can get an RV, a camper, but none of those people want to tow their RV or camper to Niagara Falls State Park, right? Because why would you want to get into that traffic congestion in parks? So we added this this year. We're hoping as part of our growth that we're expanding that to seven days a week next year because that is one of our most popular micro loops on the route. So we've been running to Lockport since 2021. Um, and you can see, and this is really, you know, you can see all the sites, and I know this is not blown up on here, um, but this is a pretty comprehensive transportation system to be running. Uh, and we are very mindful that we're not only connecting uh, to our assets, but we're connecting to community. Um, we're connecting to small businesses. We have a savings pass that's part of um, a part of our program that you can pick up a savings pack and get a discount at over 50 different businesses that are within the Niagara Falls National Heritage Area and Niagara County. And all those pieces continue to push to extend the state for visitors, but also provide an experience for locals. And I always say economic impact is economic impact. Right? Visitors have economic impact that they bring in, but families who get on the shuttle to go and do something, whether it's buying ice cream or going to Old Fort Niagara, are also spending money here. Um, and that is economic impact, and it serves us both ways. So the shuttle was built with strategic partnerships. I've talked a lot about this, and it was built and continues to grow because of the strategic partnerships that we built in those early years. And I bring up the New York Power Authority because they have been truly wonderful in continuing their support. Since 2016, they have not wavered in their funding to be able to support the shuttle. Um, we continue to work with them to bring people to the Niagara Power Project. We offer the flat Tesla um, at the Power Project, which is just is like a, you know, a fun, um, a fun marketing feature that features Tesla um, and gets kids connected to the great experience that they can have there. So strategic partnerships is really um, a key part of the work that we do in every single one of our projects. Just not this Discover Niagara shuttle, some murals, it's the Heritage Center, it's all of it. So I want to talk a little bit about economic impact. And prior to doing this, 
Um, another great amenity that we added is we wrapped all of our shuttles in Polly King artwork this year. Um, and my friend back there, Don King, who's sitting in the back, right? Um, his mom, renowned artist Polly King, um, is someone that we continue to champion here. And we thought, what a fantastic idea to actually elevate the experience, again, connect people to what makes this place so special by wrapping all the vehicles. So every single one of the vehicles, seven in total, are wrapped in Polly King artwork, which I think is amazing. I'm just gonna fast forward to my economic impact. So we know that it extends the stay of visitors, um, extending the stay of visitors, increases the dollar spent in an area. So that includes not only your occupancy tax rate, it also includes your sales tax rate. We support small businesses, restaurants, it creates revenues for local economies, and it creates jobs. Um, just the number of drivers that we've added, and the Gray Line can speak more specifically to this, we have dedicated drivers for our shuttle route, and those jobs are important. Um, it also gets people to jobs, which is also equally important. It also solves the relationship um, disputes, which I find really amusing by tourists that come into town and do not want to drive with their significant other anymore. And they don't want to find their way to Old Fort Niagara because they'd be arguing all the way to Old Fort Niagara. So we also look at the shuttle as a bit of counseling where they can sit in separate seats and just ride the shuttle versus talk about how they're gonna get there. So from the perspective of, of what the shuttle and the idea of a transportation system was designed to do, we've really fit those buckets very well. Um, and then there's more. So I talk often about the social impact of the shuttle. Um, when we built this, I don't think anyone could have envisioned the social impact of the shuttle. That we did not know that the systemic barriers of transportation affected our community as much as they do until we saw people who live in Niagara Falls, Lewiston, Youngstown, get on the shuttle to get to jobs, to get on the shuttle to get to a grocery store, to get on the shuttle to go to Niagara Falls Memorial to get to a doctor's appointment. So that is something that, and I get goosebumps thinking about it, that continues to drive us to make that experience better um, because those are the people that are getting on on a day-to-day -day basis um, because there are no other transportation options and when you think about it that barrier of transportation which affects one in five one out of every five families in niagara falls is a barrier to jobs if you don't have transportation you can't get to a job so if we're building an amazon facility in wheatfield and we're using the argument that's going to create jobs. Why are we not talking about how we're getting people who live in this neighborhood to those jobs when there isn't? That doesn't exist, right? Then who's getting those jobs? And then how can we talk about the revitalization of a city? And so that so our shuttle has really opened our eyes to not only that barrier, but that we're a solution to many people who don't have that transportation. And I think that the saddest part for us as a team is when the shuttle ends. Because when the shuttle ends, that goes away for people. Um, and I specifically think, and Aaron knows this, um, of the family who worked very hard with their son who was cogn cognitively challenged to empower him with independence by riding the shuttle to his job in tops at tops and it took them all summer long to have him get the courage to take the shuttle and lewis into tops right and he did and it worked and now it's gone right and so when we talk about our growth and where we want to grow we want to grow into a place that this is a year-round experience so that we're not only changing the trajectory of a short-term short-term like six-month tourist season right um, turning that into a place that says, this is a place you can visit all year round and we can provide transportation for the people who live here and meet that need too. So financial sustainability for the project, uh, and, and I'll talk a little bit about like, you know, what that model looked like. Initially, everybody contributed, um, but that model wasn't going to stay. 
And so we really worked together to seek a dedicated funding source. Um, and that was an increase in the occupancy tax, uh, which at the time, I don't think I knew how difficult that was going to be. Um, it seemed like a pretty reasonable expectation to have. Um, and it wasn't until uh, one of our local state representatives said to me, well, Sarah, you're going to have to get a unanimous vote from the Niagara County legislator, the city of Niagara Falls legislator, um, and the city of Lockport legislator, unanimous. And I immediately had called my dad up, who's long time been serving Niagara County in many ways. I was like, has this ever happened? You know, is this, you know, a crash course and madness. Um, and, you know, from my knowledge, it hasn't happened, but we kept moving forward. And in that year, which was 2018, um, secured unanimous votes from all those legislators, which I think then surprised that state representative who didn't think that was going to be possible and put them in a more of a difficult position of then having to carry it to Albany and get it in committee and go through that legislative process. Um, and I think because maybe it was such a surprise that it just didn't happen that year, right? Which is really frustrating. But long story short, um, you had to start it all over again the next year. And I had to start with unanimous votes again. And we did it again. And then finally, it made it through both the assembly, um, many thanks to Mornello, their state senator, Rob Ward, as well, um, with some help from the Western New York delegation about the importance of this, um, that we were able to secure that 1% increase. And that has been our dedicated source of funding but I would argue that that pathway, and as you think about where you want to grow into that regional approach, that pathway is only built by collaboration. That pathway is only built by partnership because those are the people who are calling those elected officials' offices, right? Those are the people who are writing letters of support. And so it's really the key to unlocking, you know, this regional transportation formula is collaboration and it is strategic partnerships. And it's finding and putting differences aside to at least sit at the table to have that conversation. So today, um, again, we're really very grateful for everyone that supported the 1% increase in Occupancy Act and the New York Power Authority for continuing their funding because that is how we fund the shuttle system. And as we look forward to growth, a couple things. Number one is we would like to very much begin to introduce an electric fleet, um, vehicles to our fleet, which I know Gray Line has been a tremendous partner in having that conversation, that we would like to become environmentally sustainable. We'd like to lead those efforts and model those efforts. We would also like to be a part of any of the solutions to where there's gaps in transportation. Where can we step in? We have the vehicles. Can we find the funding to be able to go year round? Even if it's a reduced fleet, even if it's only two vehicles that are running from November 1st to April 1st, or three vehicles, right? What does that look like? And then how do we unlock and be part of the solution to unlock the solution to that regional concept of moving people between Buffalo and Niagara Falls and acting like a region, right? Why not capture a visitor audience longer? together and can we be part of the solution through the model that we developed here that i feel is very very successful one of the greatest benefits to the shuttle that i'll talk about um, just briefly social impact again this year we supported 60 specials that's 60 community groups that we provide the shuttle to to get kids to field trips to be in parades for so many opportunities for seniors right to support small business initiatives 60 events um, and that's something that can be modeled um, in either county but we certainly should be working together um, and with that being said i don't think i have anything more i know that's long and i never expected to be up here talking about transportation again my background is not transportation um, but I'm happy to answer a question if you have a question or something I didn't address. If you want something more, yes. I live in Niagara County. 
No, I don't. I live in New Thane, New York. I've been on the shuttles quite a bit. Yep. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I can't hear it. I just couldn't hear what you said. So we 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 haven't. Um, I'm not familiar with any complaints of not seeing out the windows. We've only had really really positive feedback about the wraps on the shuttles. We've been doing this since 2016, and both administrations have supported it. Oh, the executive administration and the resign administration? Yes. Why aren't you here in attendance? I don't know. Did you invite them? It's not my meeting, and I was invited as a speaker. I don't know. Which it was also so we did. We we shared it on all of our social media. So I can send you if you want to give me your email. I'll send you the full list. So one of so I can speak to the main audiences that we service in the specials. So the first main audience are school children. So a lot of times we'll work with school districts, particularly Niagara Falls, to get them to field trip areas. So we do that on a consistent basis. The second is community pride events. So they participate in a lot of the parades. They participate in Jingle Falls. They participated um, in support of many small businesses as well. So, but it's not, it's not. No, I'm just simply saying I'm just the speaker. I was invited to be here. Okay, but this isn't, this is not, um, this is actually with the Citizens for Regional Transit. Thank you, Doug. I do my best. Thank you. Is it okay? Everything is okay? Yeah, let's just sit at the table here. I'm going to invite people up and we'll talk. Yeah. Well, I think we can move on. We're going to bring our panel up here and we'll have a discussion. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Go, go. Where do you want to go? Okay, the question is where do you want to go next? So we always try to keep our options open. So I think one of the pathways we've been asked by Tondawanda, North Tondawanda, to go there and do a micro loop similar to the micro loop between Four Mile Creek um, and Youngstown. And that's the beauty of micro loops, right? Like you can, they're a little bit easier to implement than the main artery that we were able to implement. So that's a possibility. Um, we also would like to examine if there's an opportunity for us to do a direct shuttle route between Buffalo Niagara Airport and downtown Niagara Falls. Um, just as an opportunity to be able to service a lot of the international guests that come in and expect for public transportation. Um, 
that if that's an opportunity, we would look there. Um, if there's an opportunity to expand to Buffalo and start off small or be able to model and add micro loops in, happy to have that conversation too. So we leave them all up there, and when the funding emerges, we, we start working towards it. Let me go to the table and we'll. Sure. If we, if we could have our panel come to the table, I think we can make this work, hopefully. Saying that, for example, from the other day, from a perspective. Um, so I know there's an opportunity to be provocative, right? And when I read the announcement for today's meeting, it says we are infrequent and uncoordinated, right? So I look at that as a hmm, what does that mean? So just a couple of little information for folks. We work very closely with you, we work very closely with Niagara Quebec to make sure that they're not uncoordinated. Um, and I guess I'm going to how many how many trips are there between downtown Buffalo and Niagara Falls on a daily basis? 34 in each direction every day. So it's maybe in three but that's a, a bus every half an hour. And to recreate that for the second day of the boy would be a huge challenge, right? So I think that the only best I want to start with here today is because I love the product and I think it's great. I think when you, if you're looking to expand, you really need to look to expand into the voids, not try to recreate. And I think what we need to do is kick that perception out and try to do a better job of coordinating and a better job of communicating. We certainly want to grow. We've got to really grow. With what we do, we can certainly do a better. And we can do a better by our own belief. So I think that, that's the quick message is that what we a better leverage the investment we currently have to make it easier for people to use, easier to understand and operate. In the numbers I thought about the big thing coverage, the uh, the um, the bus that we run through the community, like all through the summer as well. But there's a major investment there. So a lot of great stuff going on. It's just what you work on how to get As the Tourism Coach Agency for Niagara Falls and Niagara County, I will echo that the Discover Niagara Shell has been a, a major significance for us in our ability to get people farther out from downtown Niagara Falls. Um, you know, we know that most of our domestic visitors do come in our vehicles. Uh, that being said, like Sarah alluded to, a lot of people want to drive once they get here. They don't want to have to figure out how to get to Lockmore or how to get to Youngstown. And so it's easier for them to be able to get on the shelf, which is a huge asset. Uh, one of the things I want to add to uh, talk about what Sarah talked about is the international visitors. Uh, the biggest challenge we have with international visitors right now is that both of them arrive to Buffalo Niagara International Airport. About 10 years ago, uh, the NTA had a 210, uh, which ran directly from the Buffalo Airport to Niagara Falls every day uh, in high season. I believe it was May to October. I, I don't know I think that's um, what it was. And that was that was critical to getting our international visitors here easily. Now, even though the 77, which is pretty great too, because it goes from downtown Niagara Falls directly to Buffalo, or sorry, well, I guess so, from Buffalo to Niagara Falls, back and forth downtown, that's where our international visitors have to go first. So it essentially can take up to two to two and a half hours for an international visitor if they don't want to take a taxi. If they're accustomed to public transportation, they have to do that in the Buffalo Airport. They have to get on, on an NTA bus from the Buffalo Airport, go to downtown Buffalo first, change buses to get to Niagara Falls. And you have to remember, they're also schlepping a lot of luggage. Most of them are traveling with a really big suitcase, a big backpack, they have a lot of stuff. And so losing that convenience was was a loss, I guess, is a better way to say it. And I know Sarah mentioned possibly looking at being the being the um, conduit to bring that back, but if there was any way we could appeal to the NFTA to do that, so that we don't have to pay for ourselves, it would be even better. <laughs> so that's just something I wanted to mention yeah, that could be available to us. It's a 77 screen, but the two times are better. Thank you. Uh, again, I'm Patrick Gale, I'm president of the Buffalo Niagara, uh, based in uh, the city of Buffalo. 
and uh, prior to the pandemic, we did run a visitor center inside of the airport. And at that time, the number one question that we would get at that visitor center was, how do we get to the So that connectivity from the fall, or from the airport to the fall experience, uh, very important. Now, for us in Buffalo, we are actually trying to emulate what Sarah has done. And we have just started uh, conversations internally with several of our partners about how do we create these um, investigation loops. We're actually looking at three potential different uh, routes as well right now. Um, potentially a fourth down the road, and as you said, it, it has to start with a pipe. Uh, but that fourth would then, similar to Lockport, taking people to the East of World, you know, another one of our main attractions in the area of town. Uh, but it all really does come down to that transportation need for visitors as well as residents, as well as our workforce. Um, and so everything that Sarah said is exactly what we're trying to do in Buffalo and figure that out, and figure out all of the opportunities that are necessary to fund it. Um, but the things that people forget about that you highlighted, especially the Wi-Fi, the need for bikes, because one of our groups would actually go to our waterfront as well, and people will want to buy their bikes out there. Um, so we are really trying to learn from what has taken place here in Buffalo, or in uh, Niagara uh, Falls, in Niagara County, but how can we make that happen? The other thing will be is that connectivity between Buffalo and Niagara Falls, because we do like to make sure that our visitors are getting that uh, full experience in Western New York and our two counties because honestly, our visitors can care less about our geopolitical factors. They don't even know what it is. They just want to go to Buffalo, have a cultural experience, and then come up to uh, and also have the outdoor recreation experience and vice versa. And we just need to make it seamless and easy for those visitors as well as our residents to be able to do those types of things. Again, like I said, uh, Sarah and related as well, it comes down to that workforce opportunity as well, getting people to their jobs. So this is something that we're working on uh, in Erie County and Buffalo, uh, to see what we can do to make the same type of situation happen in our destination. But again, it will come down to that communication between Buffalo and Buffalo. And I think one of the things that we can really take from this is the importance of connecting our two cities. And I we appreciate the, the, the boundaries and the barriers and the two separate tax bases and, and they have to operate differently in our understanding that the United County tax base is earmarked for transfer tourism. The Buffalo one was in the general fund and then has to be allocated and there's a lot of politics that gets involved in. And, to, and, then, and then plus the, the, the board we can and share the money between. I mean, there's a lot of issues, but the opportunities are so great. I hope that we come out of this meeting and say, hey, let's work together and let's figure out a way to make it happen. And we can get the Erie County Legislature to pass such a life and I got it. That's what we did. And then start working together and maybe we need some, some rough machine. But boy, that's not the opportunities. Fantastic. With the uh, you know people right now that we got we got here not not caught we got Lockport we got the the Fort Dow Creek I didn't even know about that and we got the, the stuff there for a long time back in 2013 we started going and just looking at this there was really nothing connecting anything we had to rent a car or to take a cab or wouldn't see you know disease or anything you know we got now let's get it to, to Buffalo as well if you think about it people come here you know and, and, and see that the sites in Niagara County. You know, I'll probably say one day, I'll probably say two. If we could tie in Buffalo, you know, with all the stuff up there, it's a much larger area, many, many attractions that, that could be promoted and integrated with our people. You know, and suggested, like they do in Canada, and go there and say, you know, option B is you get, you get a pass to all the stuff in Buffalo, too. And then people are going to be staying here for a week, like they do in Disney World. Disney World, they, they've got all their centers. And every one of them gets millions of people every year, and it's all connected by Canada. You know? Here we, we, we've done it. Another plan is actually let's do it in, in Buffalo as well. I know, it's, I know it's not easy. It's easy for me to sit up here and say, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, please do. Yeah. So, uh, one idea for you on your uh, where you went to all the legislature on increasing the Fed tax is maybe adding another component to your already existing Fed tax. 
is start touching that tax on short term That's one thing that Buffalo and other counties are looking at doing right now. And they can do that internally in your county. I don't I don't know your politics in Niagara County in Niagara Falls, but that's something that they're able to do is just to add in those short term rentals to collect that tax on that. So for Buffalo, that will end up collecting about maybe two, uh, one to two million additional millions of dollars um, into the overall debt tax collection. That could be something that could also be earmarked specific for transportation. One other thing is that I don't know if like to see, <laughs> but you know, I think even before we, I know the transportation activity and the sharing of money is, is hard, but I, I would like to, to you know, to, I guess, encourage coordinating with the two of them. I know Niagara County has a, a tourist brochure with all the Niagara County things that they do, Buffalo has one too. You know, it'd be good to somehow coordinate those two together. When we go up here and say, what's there to do around here? You know, you know, how long is this event? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, Patrick refers to it perfectly as the geopolitical boundaries that even though they don't exist for this area, they do very much exist for us. That we do have to always be mindful and respectful of just by function of how we are currently funded and how our contracts are currently laid out. That being said, don't think for a second that our organizations don't work incredibly well together and very closely. Um, because that is definitely something that happens on a regular daily basis between all of our different departments, from sales to PR to et cetera. And so I, I don't know that it's necessarily, you know, we, we start to lean towards, even though we know, for instance, you're referring to brochure, our travel guide, we still distribute 250,000 of those a year, helping out on the COVID. Next year, it's probably about three, three point five thousand. That being said, we really do rely pretty heavily on our website to be the resource for people once they're here and once they're in market to find everything that they're looking to do. And we do have a Buffalo, a Buffalo link on our site as they do on our on there. So I think a lot of this does seamlessly happen. Um, if we are working together much better, I would say, arguably now than we ever have. And so I think that's already happening. And I think, you know, to this whole point, if, if Erie County and, and Buffalo are able to pull this off separate from the discovery of the show, we didn't have to worry about how to fund something in Erie County. That would just be crazy. And then we can figure out how to work with the NFTA to continue to run the loop on their bus that's already happening regularly between downtown Buffalo and Niagara Falls. I don't think this is too far off. This doesn't seem like a stretch to me. So, I'm going to go with it. The brochure, I don't know. Yeah, that's correct. Is anybody from the Niagara uh, Gazette? Okay, so I was steward by the Niagara Gazette last week, or the week before, uh, because I was uh, not quoted properly in the public uh, news, and they took the story. I said that uh, uh, Niagara Falls is, um, what did I say? Um, oh, by the way, Niagara Falls is 20 minutes away. Niagara Falls is actually the cherry on the cake for uh, Buffalo and Erie County. We bring every single one of our fan tours, meeting planners, tour operators, press, to Niagara Falls because it helps us close the deal for meetings and conventions and sporting groups and uh, everything else that we do because we have, the, we have a very rich arts and culture and business travel, uh, business that comes. But because we're 20 minutes away, and that's why we do have Niagara in our name, is because a lot of people think that Buffalo is a suburb of New York City. So we use it as a uh, geographical identifier, but also an opportunity to close the deal to bring our visitors to Niagara Falls, because like I said, it helps close that deal. So unfortunately, I was misquoted in the Buffalo News, and then they got ran in an editorial with the uh, Niagara Gazette. And I get it. <laughs> but you need to understand as well as a community the importance that we do put on Niagara Falls. I have known John Percy in the 35 years that I've been in this industry. We have been long term friends. And I like to think that we have increased the opportunity of our collaboration. We do work so close together as a team 
uh, again, when it makes sense for us as well. Because in the end, I don't care if my visitors come to my club, I don't care if they go to Elkinville, I need them to stay for my financial purposes in, in your account. And John Percy would say the exact same thing. They can go to that, they can go to your account, they can go to Elkinville, they can go to Niagara on the Lake, as long as they come back and spend the night and that's where it ends for us as far as any contention. But our visitors, they don't care about that stuff. Um, they want to go where they want to go, and that's where it's important for us to show collaboration that we are playing well in the same sandbox, and that's what we do. And we've done it very well um, over the last 10 years that I've been with this is Buffalo Niagara, and even before that. So our entities may not understand that because I, it used to be that. If we were successful, our locals didn't know what we were doing because our advertising and efforts were taken outside of the destination. Our dollars were spent to bring people from the outside in. So that's kind of changed over the last couple of years due to COVID, where we have really needed to engage more with our community and more with our residents. And so you are starting to see a little bit uh, more of our presence, but that's why it's also important to have these types of forums so that our residents understand our collaboration and why we do work together, but again, they also understand at a certain point there has to be a line <laughs> where Andrea wants people staying in my county and I want people staying in your county. But they can go back and forth. They can even stay in your county for a couple nights and then come to my county for a couple nights. Absolutely. And we're thrilled about that. But again, it's going after those other markets that have a propensity to stay a little bit longer. And they'll do this. Can the panel speak to the branding disconnect that comes for Niagara Falls? When you travel outside of Western New York, you tell somebody you're from Niagara Falls, they think you're from Disney. They think it's wonderful. Their face lights up with a big smile. It's awesome. When you tell them you're from Buffalo, they say it's a snow melting yet, and the bills are going to the Super Bowl. On the other hand, if you tell somebody from Buffalo, from parents, hey, I love the Niagara Falls, move there, the reaction that you always get is, aren't you afraid you're going to be shot? What? How what an awful place? Why would you do that? Did you lost your mind? How would we correct that misperception of this from New York? Yeah, I don't know if we can hear it, but I'll let you answer it any time. I'm not sure I'm necessarily best suited because my focus is tourists. Um, but I will say, as a person who was born and raised here, I think we have an identity problem. We have a personal identity problem, first and foremost. We've gone through a lot for a long time. I'm 43 years old, and I didn't have the advantage of seeing the heyday grandparents used to talk about Main Street and uh, pre-urban renewal. I, I didn't see any of that. I grew up in the 80s. And I will tell you that downtown Niagara Falls is the nicest in my lifetime now than it has ever been since I was born. Could my grandparents have us and their lovely souls say that? No, maybe not. But I, I, I can say that I see so much improvement in this community in my lifetime. That being said, I think we need to figure out a way to get our local community to spend more time in the local community, first and foremost. We don't feel great about ourselves, other people aren't going to feel great about us either. And I also do think we have a we have a challenge of getting the Buffalo media to cross the Grand Island bridges for anything other than bad news. Anytime something bad happens here, every single one of them is here. Anytime something good happens and we do press conferences and we send out press releases, nothing. So you're not wrong. That is a very fair assessment. I don't necessarily have an answer for you tonight, but I can say that it's it's it starts with ourselves and it starts with our own personal pride as a as a person who's born and raised here in this community. So I moved to Buffalo in uh, 2014. I was probably going through my interview process at this time ten years ago. And when the headhunter called me about the job, and said I think it's a good opportunity in Buffalo. And I said, you need to call me back when you've got a great opportunity in the city that's not up. Because typically I get a lot of left. Um, <laughs> that, that's not true. 
we'll see that that's part of our problem in Buffalo too, and there are counties that were very self deprecating. But everything that you said was my perception of Buffalo. Last four Super Bowls in a row, that there was this big gigantic snowstorm in 1977 that Alpha Seltzer and John Carson ran the forever, that it was this down on this left West Elf City. The only positive stuff that I was ever exposed to was anything positive that's in Western than Sam and Price. And so that was my limitation. And so, but the head up said, no, do a little research, call me back. So I did. And I said, okay, I'll take that interview. After I called Chuck Percy and said, what do you think? He said, take that interview. And um, I am the perfect example of our overall branding uh, for uh, Buffalo, which is the unexpected Buffalo. Because once I got here, I thought, oh, I had no idea that Buffalo had this great um, uh, water. That Buffalo has this great arts and culture scene. That Buffalo has all this great food. And in our own research, we started to find out that's exactly what our main planners, what our customers, and our visitors are saying too. That really we need to get people to come to Buffalo and experience it. Our problem is I don't have funding to do that on a nationwide basis to do a nationwide rating game. My budget is $4 million. I go up against uh, cities like Pittsburgh and Cleveland with about 18, 20 million dollar budgets. I can only really advertise that 300 mile radius. So I don't have the resources to help that Buffalo story. But I can't tell you once we get people to come to Buffalo, to come to Niagara Falls, they get it and they fall in love with it. And then they say, I can see myself holding my meeting there. I can see bringing my sporting event in Buffalo. I understand it now. And what we also hear is that the attendees that are excited about it, and then they want to come back for a leisure visit after they've been there for a business meeting or a sporting event. What we're also now working on is Great Lakes Cruise and the propensity for return visitation from people that go on Great Lakes Cruises is more than 50%. Uh, once they've been to one of the different port cities, they want to come back and spend more time. And so again, that's what we rely on are those repeat visitations. But we have to get them here first to experience it. But for me, it goes back to the fact that I'm just a good man of it, and I can't tell that about the story. But again, like I said, the most self-deprecating people I've ever met in my life, but also the proudest people of being uh, Buffalonians and uh, residents of your county. But we can put ourselves down so quick at the same time. But don't you dare. Uh, have an outsider say it to them first. <laughs> and those are all good points. And then, of course, we get an occasional snowstorm, which always makes national media. And oh my God, here we go. And freshmen go, oh, no, I don't want to go over here. And it's, and it's not right. And it's, it's not going to be something like hurricanes and tornadoes and poop and all that kind of stuff that you get at fires. You know, it's in the end of the I've been here the whole night for this day, too. I got a question here. I'll take it in one second. I just want to make one comment, and that is one of the things that you're saying here, and I think it was the reason that think about a better way to deal with some of the political issues and some of the funding, and find a way to share between your colleagues. Those are very difficult things. <laughs> My question is uh, what can our my organization, Citizen Visual Trans, and others who work for those that what can we do to help, um, you know, help? Solve that problem, and it's going to be a long time thing. But the, you know, we had some some organizations to be able to the Niagara River Greenway Commission, and we've got the income as well. You know, we have we have to do more. So, real quick question: I'll answer that, then I'll answer the question. I would say I think we need to first recognize that this problem needs to be solved. I think. First and foremost, you know, as Patrick alluded to earlier, he and his partners in Erie County are already talking and working to build a model similar to what exists here in Niagara County. If that's able to happen, again, I don't know that we necessarily have to fix a new model where we're separate but equal that isn't broken. Um, then we don't have to disrupt the legislative process. We don't have to disrupt any of that because we're already going to be doing two things exactly the same with our own separate funding entities and use the NFTA's existing 
model between Buffalo and Niagara Falls as our connection. So I'm not sure we necessarily have to get to that point just yet until we determine that Patrick and his crew in Erie County are not able to successfully do this on their own, in which case, as you do in Niagara County, you come rest. I'll have to break with us in that time. But I, I agree with you here. You know, I, I think that we're taking the steps that internally in Buffalo, we see the opportunity uh, to create those uh, three loops that I talked about. But it does come back to that connectivity between the two uh, cities. Um, as far as the legislative side of things, I, I don't think it's going to be necessary because we're working through it through um, you know, our, our own partnership. Uh, in our own destinations, and um, we've got a great amount of work at. Uh, we don't have to recreate something. We can just look at what Sarah has done here, probably use her as an advisor uh, to help us uh, kind of guide through it. But I already have great players in Buffalo who really want to make this happen. And uh, but then I think it just comes down to that connectivity with the NFDA. 34 trips back and forth is a lot. Um, and how do we just better fill those buses with, you know, the workforce as well as the visitors as well as the residents and make it well known that that really works. There's a question back here. Of 
Nika was a separate system. So the NFT is its own system, and the shuttle is a different system. And it's a tourist, tourist, tourist system. So, I mean, I, ideally, it would be in the summertime if they have tourists here, and they have that you know, all one system, and it's hop on, hop off. It's free, it's paid for by the Fed tax or whatever. So, when we're in the summertime, we can go anywhere in the two counties and, and all the attractions. You know, the NTA is also there for, for, for the additional transit, but uh, it's a different system. We've got to buy a ticket. People want to do that. They have to do uh, tickets to the fair system now. I've got my car now, and I'm figuring it out. But the tourists are going to be a little less comfortable putting on this system initially, perhaps. But uh, so, yeah. So we do offer the hotel shuttle system, right? And that's heavily used by the hotels. And they seem to be able to navigate that pretty well. I mean, we, our, our hotel partners in the city of Niagara Falls have been really great to work with. And I think that, again, that's, that's a different brand. That yeah, bus looks different, right? It's a green bus. It's got a green stuff. Here's a, a white bus with, with a great uh, wrap on it, which is really, really unique. And you're probably going to have a different look of a bus. And I think that's some of the opportunity that we can work on. So even though they're different operators and different systems, there's a look and a feel that tells a, a visitor that this is where I need to be and this is where I need to be. And that's more based on my experience as a traveler than just my experience as an operator. Maybe the pattern of your system can be used with a delicate look at these buses as the discovery uh, shuttle buses. Then eventually, when we actually make that connection, it will actually be the same system. When you move that, at least it looks and feels the same. So, oh, yeah, I was in that in my falls, and now I got one here. I can go and visit the attractions here as well. There's nothing for us to recreate. Yeah, Carl. So how do you expect to get that? Because that data will allow you to figure out where the car is and how much it is. Which box is the not spot? We have to turn it in the market and bring it into the university. And also, what destinations? Maybe there's some destinations here in Niagara Falls that you may want to promote for. So how do you go about watching that data? That's the question you want. So I'm going to answer that. I've got enough. Okay, the question is how do, you, how do you find your data, where people are coming from, where they want to go, and how do you help them to do your plan and look at their services? Well, one of the new things is this little phone right here. Uh, we are able to, uh, through technology, uh, we're able to track people through their uh, even their search of a destination, we're able to pixelate our digital ads, so it creates a profile, if you will, not specific to a person, uh, but it aggregates everything. And so we can we can watch a person uh, or a traveler through their buying process if they go to an airline website, to a hotel website, uh, even to the point when they get to our destination, and then we can track how travelers go. We can. Look, we can, the uh, platform is called Zartico. We can pinpoint a day, we can pinpoint a month, we can pinpoint, you know, a, a particular week. We can look at if we have a particular group that's been found for a convention. Just highlight those days, we can look at the convention center, and then what they call a fire, and it shows where people travel within our destination, and we can see traffic patterns and whatnot. So we're also able to go back and find out what their home destination is. And uh, for us, we use it as well. But it's 50 miles outside of um, Erie County, um, just tracking, tracking out of town visitors when they come in. Also, through our just our own Google Analytics, uh, we are able to track where people are coming to our website. Um, all of that information is um, aggregated as well. There are several different tourism platforms that give us that type of information. Uh, and that just makes it so much easier for us to then look at what are some new emerging markets for us. So through this platform, we've discussed, discovered that Washington, D.C., Boston, and 
Philadelphia are uh, high growth potential markets. They have a uh, uh, longer stay than, say, somebody that's coming from Pittsburgh or Cleveland. Their average length of stay, stay is anywhere between 4.2 nights to 4.8 nights compared to uh, Cleveland and Pittsburgh, who have, or I'm sorry, um, even uh, Rochester and Syracuse are coming for 1.5 nights. Uh, but the, that's the type of information that we're able to collect and make our overall decisions on. And again, as I said, we have a very limited budget, so that's where we can know where people are coming from and put our advertising uh, dollars into. Uh, for us, our top markets are, you know, those, those dry markets right now. Uh, Central New York, New York City emerged as a big market for us during the pandemic because there was a certain period of time where uh, we could only go to New York, uh, New Jersey, Connecticut. Uh, and so we saw a lot of people coming from New York City. They are still coming, even though now they can travel. We can travel freely throughout the United States, but uh, we now are putting uh, more dollars into Brooklyn zip codes uh, because we know that that's a uh, particular uh, age demographic, uh, education demographic, financial demographic that are coming to our destination. And so we're targeting that very heavily. Going into the next year, like I said, we looked at those growth potential markets, so we're looking at putting more resources into uh, Boston, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. The great thing about those, we have great air uh, coming into the airport from those markets. So uh, with the number of flights, the number of seats that we have coming in, we see that as an opportunity because, again, they're going to spend more time when they're on our destination, they're going to spend more money while they're in our destination. Well, so technology is definitely on our side as long as the federal government doesn't start to shut this down and uh, people continue to have uh, no or, um, uh, their phones open for those uh, types of uh, tracking. It also helps us make better travel decisions, uh, travel buying decisions. I, I won't be later because everything you said we do as well as far as an organization, so I don't want to waste too much more time on it. So ditto. <laughs> Quick question, Pat. I mean, you, you're out there, so you from all nine calls as well as Buffalo, or are you demographic? Uh, yeah. Niagara is part of our game, so we are talking about Niagara Falls. Again, like I said, it's the, it's the closer for us. To say that we are 20 minutes from Niagara Falls is an opportunity for people that are coming. And, and this is part of my story is that we used to have to leave as the city of Buffalo. We had to leave with Niagara Falls to get people to come to Buffalo. Because of all of the private and public investment that's been made in Erie County and Buffalo over the years, we are able to stand alone as a destination now. People are coming for that arts and culture. They're coming for our food. They're coming for business travel. But they're also coming because Niagara Falls is 20 minutes away. They're going to come for all of the things that we have to offer in Buffalo. But again, that's the, that's the cheer down the Sunday for us say that Niagara Falls is 20 minutes away. Like the Andrew said, they have content for Buffalo that's on their website. We have the exact same thing. And like I said before, every time that we host a, a travel writer or a media planner fan or a tour operator fan, we always bring those people to Niagara Falls so that they can see how close it is. That again, it's that close of course. And, and for us, because we're Niagara County, obviously, People who are coming here are coming here to see the water fall over the cliff. So from there, what we try to do is use that as our hook. We know you're coming here for this, but we have all of these other amazing things across Niagara County that you can see and do, uh, whether it's history, whether it's outdoor adventure, whatever the case may be. We, we always want Niagara Falls as the initial hook, but to build out that length of stay and to keep using that expression, we want to tell the story of all the other things that people can do. Yeah, you could probably explore the Niagara Falls State Park in a day, a day and a half, but stay three or four days and see everything else. And again, back to you know, Patrick's point, if you want to go and visit Buffalo and Erie County, you can do that as well and stay longer just to sleep in Niagara County. Yeah. 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 See all these buses come in and all these international folks from different countries, from 
Thank you.